Good Wednesday evening to you. I want to welcome you to the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina. And if you don't have a church to attend or you're looking for a church to attend, we'd love to invite you to come and be with us in any and all of our services. Our Sunday morning services start at 10 o'clock. We have Sunday school preaching at 11, Sunday nights at 6, Wednesday nights at 7. Our church is located at 1233 Collins Town Road, Westfield, North Carolina. We also have an FM transmitter for those that are sick and unable to come and be on the inside of the church with us. They can sit in their parking lot in their car and tune their radio to 92.9 FM and hear what's going on inside. It's not the same as being inside, but you know what? If you can't come in, it's the next best thing. And I appreciate our folk that are feeble and not able to come in due to sickness that they can come and and still be with us in the service even though they're not inside. Well, thank you for being with us today. Boy, it's a blessing. This is our Wednesday evening Facebook service for the shut-in and having to work, folks having to work, and maybe a caretaker. And you can't be for our services that will be going on, Lord willing, here in just a little while at the church house at 7 p.m. We put this on at 6 p.m. on our church page on Wednesday nights and hope it will be a blessing to you that are unable to attend in person. So I want to go to the Lord in prayer, and let's pray together. Father, thank you for the privilege to pray. Help us as we sing today, as we play, as we lift up your name. I pray for the lost, God near as hell, that you deal with their hearts. Show them they must be born again if they want to go to heaven. And deal with those that say, God, they're yours. You will. I know you will. And Lord, help us right now. Pray for our missionaries. God, you bless them, those that we support uh, monthly, as far as physically and financially. And God, I pray for Brother Brent Rochester and his family. You bless them. I just pray you bless this service. Use it for your glory and your honor, that Christ might be magnified, and we'll praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. We're going to sing one today out of the old church hymnal, a congregational song called An Old Account Settled. An Old Account Settled. Boy, I like that. I used to think the title was An Old Account Was Settled, but the title is An Old Account Settled. And that's talking about my old account of sin. When God saved me, thank God, it was settled long ago. We'll try to do this for you today as a congregational number. You sing along if you know it. Most of you will. I'm going to sing it. I'm going to sing it there. I'm going to get a little bit higher, maybe a little bit easier to sing. We'll see anyway. Maybe we can do it. But this is called an old account settled. Did you know that if you're not saved, your account could be settled today if you'd repent of your sins and call on the Lord? Kind of what this is talking about right here. There was a time on earth when in the book of heaven no account was standing for sins yet unforgiven. My name was at the top and many things below. I went unto the keeper settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. And the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away. When the old account was settled long ago, the old account was large and growing every day. For I was always sinning and never tried to pay. But when I looked ahead and saw such pain and woe, I said that I would settle and settle long ago, long ago. Long ago, yes, the old account was settled long ago, and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away, when the old account was settled long ago, when at the judgment bar, I stand before my king, and he the book will open, he cannot find a thing. Will my heart be glad while tears of joy will flow because I had it settled, settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago, and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away when the old account was settled long ago. He has commanded if you would enter in, and then if you should live a hundred years below, in here you'll not regret it. You 
settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago, and the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away. When the old account was settled long ago, I'm glad the old account was settled long ago. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Well, be taking that good old authorized King James Bible and be turning with us today to the book of Luke. And let me look over here, Luke chapter 6, along about verse number 37 is where we're going to be at today. Luke chapter 6, verse number 37. You say, preacher, why would you say turn in that good old authorized King James Bible? Because if you try to read out of one of them other versions, it ain't gonna read. It ain't gonna read the same. People say, well, it's just a little bit different. No, it's a whole lot different. It's changed. Anything that's changed is not the same, right? So I wanna get you on the right track. Turn in that good old authorized King James Bible and look with us in Luke chapter number six today. I wanna do one more song here before we preach this evening. I hope this will be a blessing to you. This is one that we had the privilege to sing, myself and our piano player at the church, Sister Lisa Rogers. We had the privilege to uh, sing this song at uh, Brother Junior Inman's memorial service, one of our deacons here at the church. A great, great, great man. Loved God, was a great blessing, was a great witness, and uh, just let his light shine for Jesus. We, we, we already miss him greatly, but we had the privilege of singing this song at his homegoing service and uh, we're going to try to do it for you today. In memory of Brother Junior Emmon, this is called I Want to Stroll Over Heaven With You. And it's got a great message in it. We'll try to do the best we can. And uh, we sure do desire your prayers as we try to do it. Try to get it where it won't glare. You ought to get it where it won't glare. Remember years ago, Brother Noah Fry used to come to the church and preach. And he'd get that song book under his Bible so he'd get it right where it wouldn't glare. And uh, we'll try to see if we can get this right today. I want to stroll over heaven with you. I love the message in this song right here. If I surveyed all the good things that come to me from above, if I could count all the blessings from the storehouse of love, I'd simply ask for a favor from him beyond mortal men. And I'm sure he would grant All the troubles and heartaches are banished away. And we'll enjoy all the beauty where all things are new. I want to stroll over heaven with you. So many places of beauty we long to see here below. The time and treasures have kept us from making plans as you know but come the morning of rapture together we'll be I want to stroll over heaven with you I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day all the troubles and heartaches are banished away and we'll enjoy friends we once knew then we'll meet all our loved ones and we'll meet Jesus too that will be a glad reunion and there'll be much to view while I stroll over heaven with you I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day with all the trouble
Amen. Hope that was a blessing to you this evening. And uh, it's a great, great song. And I hope and pray that was a, a help to you today. We're in the book of Luke, chapter number six. Luke, chapter number six. So keep that in mind. I'm going to lay this guitar down, and we're going to look into the Word of God here for just a few minutes. And uh, boy, I appreciate the Lord. And I appreciate the Lord allowing us to be able to proclaim the Word of God. Excuse me. God sure is good to us to allow us to do that. Luke chapter number six, we got down to about verse number. Let me find out where we got down to. I've got it wrote down right over here. Luke chapter six, verse 37. Got down to about verse number 37. Now, verse number 36 said this, as we're trying to preach through, through the book of Luke on these Wednesday evening Facebook services. So keep this in mind. Luke chapter six, verse number 36 says this. Be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. Now, I said something about this last Wednesday night's Facebook service, but you know, we want people to be merciful to us. But if we want people to be merciful to us, then we need to show mercy. Jesus said here in verse 36, be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. Verse 37 is a verse I think that's very, very, very misunderstood. We can look at some other verses in a little while, maybe if we have time over in the book of Matthew concerning these same thoughts. But here in Luke chapter six, verse 37, it says, judge not, but they don't, they don't have a period after that. You know, a lot of people today, you'll, you'll try to talk to them about something. They'll say, you're judging me. You're not supposed to judge me. The Bible says to judge not. The Bible says more than judge not. Matter of fact, we make judgment calls every day. You make judgment calls every day. We all do. It don't say, it don't just say judge not. The Bible says in verse number 37, judge not and ye shall not be judged. Now think about that. Judge not and ye shall not be judged. He also says this, condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. So he's not just saying, judge not. He's saying, if we judge, keep in mind that we're going to be judged as well because the verse says, judge not, and you shall not be judged. We need to be careful in our judgment. We don't always know men's motives. We can bear fruit. Hey, people say, well, uh, you're judging me, but listen, my life should reflect the Lord. Amen? Your life should reflect the Lord and if, and if my life don't reflect the Lord, you can make a judgment call and say, well, he must not know him by the fruit that I bear. Let's read on. We'll, we'll deal more with this in just a minute. He says, judge not and you shall not be judged. In other words, if you judge, you're going to be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. If you're not a condemning person, people won't condemn you. Think about this. He also says, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive what well, people don't want to don't want to talk about this, do they? Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. People don't want to forgive, do they? No, I'll never forgive them. I know a person that their, their saying was, and I hope they've changed. Well, I hope they've changed. There's a family I know that one of their sayings is this. If I can think of it. <laughs> one of their sayings is this. Here it is. I remember it now. One of their sayings is this. I'm done with them. I'm done with them. You know what that's saying? I am not going to forgive them. I'm done with them. That's what they mean when they're saying that. Well, Jesus said, forgive and you shall be forgiven. Do you want to be forgiven? Do I want to be forgiven? Then I need to be a forgiving person. He goes on to say in verse 38 about giving. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. He's telling us to treat people like you want to be treated, Amen. Given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom for the same measure that you meet, or give it out, for the same measure that you meet, with all it shall be measured you again. In other words, do as you want others to do. He says we should, if we judge, we got to realize we're going to be judged as well. He don't tell us not to. We'll talk about that in just a minute. He's not just talking about judge not, never, never judge at all, but he said, He's saying if we do, we got to realize we're going to be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgiven, you shall be forgiven. Then he tells us about giving. We won't, hey, 
You know, a lot of people want folks to give them things. I know, I know some people like that got on my mind right now. Boy, they want, they want people to give them. I know a person right now, all they want people to do is give them, give them, give them, and they won't even, they won't even give nothing. They don't, boy, they ain't going to give out, but they want it given in. Listen to this, verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. You want it to be, you want to be blessed? You give. Amen. You want to, you want to, people to be good to you? Be good to them. Give and it shall be given to you. It ain't always about money. It may be about time. It may be about being kind to somebody. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, it says, shall men give into your bosom. You say, I don't understand that. We'll read the next part. For with the same measure that you meet, with all it shall be measured you again. That's saying what it said in the first part of the verse. Give and it shall be given unto you. The last part says, for with the same measure that you meet, with all it shall be measured you again. In other words, if you want to, if you want God to give to you, give. Amen. If you want people to be a blessing to you, then you be a blessing to them. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Amen. Think about that. And then he spake this parable unto them. Verse 39 says, Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? Man, we need to get our eyes open, don't we? We need to get our eyes open so we can see. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? You know, that's what the, that's what the Pharisees were trying to do when they were trying to lead people to believe what they were saying. That was a blind leading the blind. Verse 40 says, The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect or mature shall be as his master. He's speaking to the Pharisees. And then he said in verse 41, now think back where it said earlier, judge not and you shall not be judged in verse number 37. Look at verse number 41. And why beholdest thou the mote or the small, small thing that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? In other words, you can see what that small thing is in your brother's eye or sister's eye that's wrong, but yet you can't see that great big thing that's wrong in your eye. That's in your eyes. It's causing you. I mean, they can see better than you can. You're trying to cast a little bit of something out of their eye, and you've got something way bigger than that in yours. He said, verse 42, Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the moat that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not. You can't even see the beam that's in thine own eye. And then he says, Thou hypocrite. We need to make sure our lives are where God wants us to be. And we all fall short, every one of us do, but I need to make sure I'm trying to live as God would have me to live. Because if I don't, I'm a hypocrite. If I try to get somebody else to get right, and I'm, I'm in worse shape than they are, that would be a hypocrite, wouldn't it? He said, verse 42, thou hypocrite, cast out first the bean out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the moat that is in thy brother's eye. Now, wait a minute. You don't hear that verse much when you hear people say, don't judge me. You know what he tells them right here? He says, thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye. In other words, let's get, I need to get my life right before I can see clearly how to help somebody else get their life right. He says, thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly, notice, then shalt thou see clearly to pull the moat that is in the brother's eye. In other words, you, it's all right to help your brother and make a judgment call when something's wrong according to what the Word of God says. Hey, if the Word of God says it's wrong, it's wrong. But if I'll get my life right, then I can see clearly, if I get that big old beam out of my eye, I can see clearly then how to help pull the moat or the small splinter out of my brother's eye. So he's not saying don't try to talk to people about things. He's saying you get right first. You get right first. Amen. Listen, many examples you could think about, I guess, but, uh, you know, I, I, I think about a lot of times the only faults we can see seems like is in other people's lives. But we got them too, don't we? You know who gives me the biggest problem? The one I'm looking at right now. Amen. I'm preaching. I'm preaching to my phone. It's on video mode. It's in front of me and I can see the reflection in that phone where I'm preaching right now. And you know who gives me the most problem? The one that's looking back at me right now. The one I'm pointing my finger at, he's pointing his right back at me in that, in that phone, in the video mode. You go look in the mirror and you see who gives you the most problem. It's you. It's your old flesh. So let's get ourselves right. Let's confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, thank God. So let's get that beam out of our eye so we can see clearly, verse 42 says, to pull the mote out that is in our brother's eye. 
I'm going to close there today. I'm going to close there in verse number 42, but we'll pick up verse 43 next week on our Wednesday evening Facebook service. But I tell you what, we need to, it, it, listen, if we don't do what he says, if we don't get our own lives right, and we're trying to tell somebody else how to get their life right, you know what Jesus said we are? We're a bunch of hypocrites. We're a bunch of hypocrites, that's what he said. Well, people don't like that, do they? Don't do that. I'm telling you, God loves you. God wants to save you. I'm glad he saved me one day. I don't deserve it, but thank God he did. Thank you for viewing this evening. It's been a blessing to be with you. I hope this scripture's been a help to you tonight. And until next week, we'd like to say we love you, the Lord. God bless you. It's my prayer.